किस्मत में विश्वास रखते हैं पर मैं किस्मत में नहीं कीमत में विश्वास रखता हूँ and it's the calculation of this kimat this intrinsic value which will be our quest for the day i'll be taking you through three different methods of calculating a share's true worth and if you find the content useful and informative then do press the like button and leave back a comment as it definitely helps me with the youtube algorithm let's begin All right so we're talking about numbers and perhaps the best way of visualizing this is to think of every business like a money printing machine. So let's say you want to buy one of these and the store manager comes back with a brand called Infosys. This particular machine will cost you 5 lakh 84000 crores and while there is no guarantee of how much it will print Infosys has been printing more and more money over the years and just last year it delivered over 33000 crores. Now if this number were higher let's say it was 1 lakh 33000 crores then i'm sure every investor would have bought this machine and taken it home but at 33000 crores it becomes our responsibility to figure out if you want to pay so much money for this brand or if one should explore some other brand in other words a proper assessment of the intrinsic value stops us from paying too much for a stock and it also helps us identify undervalued opportunities but having said this there is no such thing as a 100% accurate answer and by computing the intrinsic value an investor is merely making an estimation of the future and that's why before we start this process it's imperative that an investor always understands the company's current condition and growth potential in fact here's a simple but powerful checklist that i use which kind of answers many of the qualitative inquiries that one might have about the business also notice here i've kept the calculation of the intrinsic value at the very end because if the company doesn't pass the first lines of my checklist then i don't even bother getting to the quantitative part to put it differently it's like that quote from warren buffett where he says it's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than to buy a fair company at a wonderful price the first way of calculating the intrinsic value that is what a business might be worth is the relative value model as the name suggests this approach is about comparing the financials of the target company with its peers now one of the simpler and more popular metrics is the price earning multiple and for companies and industries that have relatively stable earnings the p ratio does do a decent job of it For example amongst the large IT services companies the current median P ratio is at 27 and at the extremes are Wipro which is at a P of 19 and L&T Technology which trades at a multiple of 37 currently which means everything being equal stocks that trade at a low P which is Wipro in this case have some upside to it and that's broadly what relative valuation is all about so here's how an investor looks at it Now Wipro which is currently available at 417 rupees a share well the investors hypothesis is that this company can at least catch up with Infosys and therefore reach a P of 24 so 417 multiplied by 24 divided by the current P of 19.7 gives us a future price estimation of 508 rupees which is one quick and dirty way of arriving at the shares intrinsic value Of course there are other metrics one can use including the price to book ratio which works when comparing capital intensive industries one can look at price to free cash flows and in that perspective hcl tech is a bit undervalued as compared to the others and then relative value can also be discovered over a period of time by either looking at the historical p ratio or where the current price is from its 52 week high or 52 week low levels now i must add here that this method does not work well in cyclical industries or when the markets are very volatile so that's something to look out for it also becomes a bit irrelevant in case of a diversified portfolio so if you are comparing reliance industries with an iocl bpcl or hpcl then my best wishes are with you and then there are additional variables that can't be ignored so things like the sales and profit growth which is where wipro has been lacking the company's competitive advantages the quality of management etc all right so let's get to the main event and understand how to find the intrinsic the estimated value of a stock using the discounted cash flow method actually the words discounted and cash flow would have already given you some hints on what to expect but in the words of warren buffett is how do you find intrinsic value in a company well intrinsic value is what is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash that a bit the business would give you between now and judgment day discounted at the proper 
discount rate. That number is what the intrinsic value of business is. Now this might sound a bit confusing, but if you go back to the money printing machine example, all we want are two big pieces of information. Firstly, we want to know how much cash the business will generate for us in the future. Like in the case of Infosys, we saw that steady increase in profits and profits are generally a function of the cash flows. And secondly, we need to know what those future cash flows are actually worth to us in today's money. Okay, now that I've said it, let's do a discounted cash flow exercise for Infosys. And there are five steps that one needs to follow here. So step one is to understand the amount of money the business is making for its owners, which is formally called owner's earnings. As a formula, this number is calculated by subtracting the maintenance capital expenditure from the operating cash flow of the company. So operating cash flow is the amount of cash generated by a company's business operations. And in the case of Infosys, this can be found on page 308 of the latest annual report, which comes to a little over 31,000 crores for the financial year 2023. With regards to the maintenance capital expenditure, this number represents the money a company needs to necessarily incur in order to continue operations and for sustaining growth. Now for Infosys, this would include property related expenses, buying laptops for employees, etc. And while this is a lot harder to figure out in the financial statement, one decently possible way of doing this is to use this expenditure row that's available within the same cash flow statement. So 31,261 minus 2,579 gives us an owner's earning of 28,682 crores for the previous financial year. And this is what I'll be using in my calculations of intrinsic value. However, I should mention here this formula for calculating owner's earnings is not a firm rule and different investors, including Mr. Buffett, have tweaked this formula based on their own understanding of financial statements. For instance, if you can't find maintenance capex, then you can also use the total capex, which includes the money spent on maintenance and growth. And that's pretty much how we define free cash flow. It's an important term and if you're not familiar with free cash flow, then I'll urge you to watch my video on margin of safety where I've explained this concept in greater details. Having said this, most companies do a very lousy job of reporting their capital expenditure number and you'll generally have to go through the earnings call transcript to get some idea of it. But surprisingly, Infosys actually reported a free cash flow number in its annual report, which came to 20,443 crores, which is quite a variation as compared to the CFO minus maintenance capex number that I have chosen. But you have to start somewhere and as you do this more often, I'm certain you will definitely prefer one method over the other. Okay, now that we have a starting point, the next step is to imagine the future of this business over the next few years, let's say the next 10 years, which is quite reasonable for a big and established company like Infosys. Actually, I'll break this into two parts. In part one, we want to understand the buildup in owner's earnings over the next 10 years. And if history were a guide, I think a 7% growth tapering down to a 5% would be ideal for our estimates, which means what is 28,000 crores now will probably grow to 50,000 crores by the year 2033. Okay, part two of the calculations revolves around terminating this scenario, which means in the 10th year, the investor needs to assume that the entire business will be put up for sale and that he or she will receive a big payout, which is also called the terminal value. Come to think of it, this terminal value is a lot similar to what we did in the first method on relative value. And just to add a variation to it, let's assume all IT services businesses 10 years from now will be valued on the basis of their owner's earnings. So historically, the market cap to owner's earnings ratio for Infosys has operated at an average of almost 20. But let's be a little conservative here and calculate the terminal value in the 10th year at a multiple of 16. So 16 times of 50,867 crores comes to 8,13,000 crores. This completes our cash flow projections for the next 10 years. And I'm sure you would agree with me that with these many assumptions, DCF modeling is definitely a very complicated and a very tricky exercise. I mean, look at it this way, from what we have done so far, the total of these cash flows over 10 years comes to almost 12 and a half lakh crores. But had I taken the growth CAGR at 8% across all 10 years, and if I'd used a slightly aggressive terminal value multiple of say 22, then the sum total of these cash flows would have increased by a good 47%. So this is where it's important for the investor to be honest with oneself and not let one's emotions 
drive these projections, which again takes me back to our checklist and the clear understanding of a company's goals, metrics and milestones is absolutely paramount. In fact, I did a similar exercise before signing up with Fisdom and what I found was a wealth management company with a unique and scalable business model. At one end are their 14 banking relationships and through them Fisdom offers wealth solutions to 1.2 million customers in 90% of PIN codes across the country. And at the other end is wealth management where Fisdom uses a combination of technology, in-house research and personalized guidance from experienced wealth managers who are equipped to offer the complete suite of financial solutions including mutual funds, stocks, tax filing, pension funds, private wealth management, bonds and insurance. If you want more information on this or if Fisdom can help you in any way, then do download the Fisdom app or visit them at Fisdom.com. The third step is to bring these cash flows into what it is worth today. And what I mean is, okay, let's look at it more like a fixed deposit. So generally, we'll put a thousand rupees in an 8% FD and at the end of one year, we'll get back the thousand rupees plus an interest of 80 rupees which means if I reverse it and promise to pay you 1,080 rupees one year from now, then I'm sure the maximum you're willing to give me today is 1,000 rupees. Now, discounting to present value works a lot like this. For example, our projected cash flow for Infosys for FY24 is 30,690 crores. Of course, this money will realize one year from now. So if I divide this number by 1.08 with 8% being my assumed discount rate, then the consequent number would give me the present value of the FY24 cash flow. Similarly, if I want to know the present value of the next year's cash flow, then this will be 32,838 divided by 1.08, which is again divided by 1.08 because 2025 is two years away. So 32838 divided by 1.08 raised to the power 2 will be the present value of that year's cash flow. Using the same process, we can now compute the present value for each future year's cash flows, which also includes the terminal value. Notice here we've made a big assumption with regards to the discount rate, which in this case I have assumed as 8%, and this gives us a sum total of 6,40,000 crores. But had I taken a different number, say 14%, then the sum total of present values would have been a lot lower at 4,20,000 crores, which is a good 35% dip in valuations. So higher the discount rate, lower is the present value of future cash flows and vice versa, which means the discount rate is a very important number and to complicate matters, Matters, there are a number of ways of arriving at it. For instance, there's the cost of capital approach that reflects the average rate of return that the company needs to pay to its debtors and equity shareholders. Then there's the hurdle rate approach which sets the discount rate based on the target or minimum rate of return that the business must achieve. Thirdly, there's the tried and tested market data approach which looks at the discount rates of comparable projects or companies in the market. And of course, there is intuition and many practitioners actually rely on their own experience and knowledge to determine their ideal discount rate. In my view, a discount rate represents the minimum percentage return that I would accept for investing my money in a company. And when I do my own calculations, I generally take 12% irrespective of whether I'm evaluating it for a large or a small company. It's not an aggressive number, it's not a conservative number either, but I've generally found 12% to be my sweet spot. So when I apply a discount rate of 12% on our estimated future cash flows for Infosys, this gives me a present value sum total of 4,80,000 crores. All right, so we've been working with cash flows, but let's not forget the cash. And per their latest annual report, Infosys has a cash equivalent of a little over 12,000 crores and also a bunch of liquid investments in mutual funds, government securities, tax-free bonds, etc. that comes to another 19,000 plus crores. So these two items get added to our 4.8 lakh crores, giving us an intrinsic value of 5 lakh 12,000 145 crores. We then divide this by the number of shares, which is almost 420 crores. And this computes to an intrinsic value of 1,221 rupees a share. And that, ladies and gentlemen, no, wait, we're not done yet because the margin of safety principle is yet to be applied. And what do I mean by margin of safety? 
Well, look at it this way. You've done the hard work of calculating the intrinsic value, but you know and I know that the discounted cash flow method is, in all honesty, a bunch of assumptions. And the problem with estimations is that things may not play out perfectly, which is why we need to add a little layer of protection to our numbers. In other words, while the computed intrinsic value per share is 1,221 rupees, me as an informed investor will apply an additional discount on it of let's say 30%, which means I'll buy shares of Infosys only when they come down to 854 rupees. Again, this 30% is also an assumption and you can probably take this number higher or lower. But my point is, come what may, it is crucially important to have that margin of safety number in any valuation exercise. Okay, so let's sum this up. In my opinion, and as per my calculations, the intrinsic value of Infosys Limited is about 5,12,000 crores, which computes to 1,221 rupees a share. At the time of recording this video, one share of Infosys was available for 1,424 rupees a share, which means per my calculations, Infosys is currently overvalued by about 16%. And finally, the buy price that I've defined for myself for one share of Infosys is based on a 30% margin of safety, which comes to 854 rupees a share. The third and final method of calculating the value of a company is using the dividend discount model. It's a framework based on expected future dividends, and there are only three inputs that an investor requires. A, we need the current dividend per share that goes into the numerator. Then comes the discount rate in the denominator, and we've already discussed discount rates when we did the DCF calculations. And finally, we need the dividend growth rate, which gets subtracted from the discount rate. For instance, Infosys paid a dividend of 32 rupees and 50 paise for FY23. So that's our numerator and that's the easy part. When it comes to the discount, we'll go with what we had taken earlier, that is 12%. And thirdly, there's the dividend growth rate, which as one can see is a bit difficult to process, but to force an estimate and because the company's profits are increasing by around 8%, let's go with 8%. So 32.5 divided by 12 minus 8% comes to a share price of 812 rupees. And per the dividend discount model, this is the intrinsic value of Infosys Limited, which when compared to the current market price makes the Infosys stock extremely overpriced. Personally, I'm not a fan of this approach and is definitely not a feasible strategy for growth stocks that pay little or no dividend. Right, so we've covered three methods in this video and although all of them require some estimations and also a bunch of assumptions, still the wonderful part is that it gives an investor a great starting point to understand what is probably the value of a business. As is often the practice, I'm leaving a simple Excel sheet in this video's description for you to get a better idea of what I've explained today and hopefully you'll make the best use of it. Once again, thank you for your time. Do share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you three days from now. Until then.